What's up, people? Adam Hunter here. I am in Las Vegas this week, so I'm doing podcasts, remote podcasts. It's going to be a great, great show. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank our sponsor, Speedweed. Listen, marijuana is legal in California. So get it delivered right to you. They will deliver it right to you. Go to speedweed.com at speedweed. They have the best marijuana, the best CBD oil, the best THC sex lube, uh, the best everything, best edibles. Just mention roasted, you get $10 off. Don't go, you know, to the dispensary and just, they set you up there, okay? They get, hey, try this, try that, try that. Next thing I know, you get in your car and a cop pulls you over and now you got a DUI. No, you got things to do. Your life is important. Don't waste your time, okay? Go to speedweed.com. Speedweed.com. Check them out. Mention roasted, you get $10 off, $100 or more. Also, another sponsor that I would like to thank is Sparks Cannabis. Sparse Cannabis is a vertically integrated, family-owned, and operated cannabis company out of California's Central Valley, okay? They're going to remove the stigma and stereotypes that are associated with cannabis by showing how cannabis fits into the motto, everyone, every day. And Sparks, higher quality products strive to provide curated experiences rather than a couch locked high where you're just like, ugh, I can't get up, oh my god, no. Their Excite and Exhale product lines do just this by focusing on the strains, terpenes, and how they interact to give you that curated experience, okay? They're launching with their flower line of premium pre-rolls and flower with pens and cartridges to follow by the end of the year. Try their Sparks Lights, pre-rolls with premium two to one CBD to THC flower. Same premium flower with less kick, okay? Check them out, okay, they love the planet, I love the planet, you love the planet, which is why they strive to be as eco-friendly as possible. They're proud to be one of the first farms to have technologically advanced greenhouses that are completely solar powered, which help reduce carbon footprint, okay? They also lose state-of-the-art LED lighting, the highest quality nutrients, and a reverse osmosis water system to remove contaminants from plants, okay? Check them out. Go to sparkscannabis.com, www s-p-a-r-x-c-a-n-n-a-b-i-s dot com their instagram is at sparks cannabis check them out now i'm talking to matt schnell who also goes by uh danger caged the guy's a badass on a three fight winning streak killing it just beat lewis smoka in one round let's talk to matt schnell now Yeah. I'm doing great. How are you doing, Adam? Good to, good to be back. Oh, man. Congrats on your, uh, you got, just on a four-fight extension? Yes, sir. Four-fight extension. Wow. How, how good did that feel? Feels good. You know, a little validation after, obviously, the landscape of the flyweight division was tumultuous there for a while. And honestly, I don't think we're out of the woods yet either but it is it, I, I think it's a sign of good faith by the ufc to to sign me to another deal so yeah i'm uh happy about it now how nervous were you when all of a sudden guys like jared brooks the monkey god and other guys were getting cut do you think you were on the chopping block of course yeah everybody was on the chopping block i think during that time if i would have took an l i would not be in the ufc right now so um, well it's yeah. crazy because you you've won three in a row uh you started off all in two what, how did you make that like turnaround? You know, I really haven't changed anything. I, I believe, I, I believe in the process. I think, uh, I think while I was uh, early on in my UFC career, I was going out there and reaching and trying to make things happen because I wanted to prove that I belonged. And when I realized that I just needed to be myself and fight to the best of my ability, like the wins have followed ever since so uh yeah i haven't changed much i've always I've always believed that i had the winning formula I, I work hard i put forth maximum effort and uh yeah well i mean it's great man your last fight was over lewis smoka who i mean that guy's a monster you finish him in one round was that the game plan we you know it's it's always the game plan to get out there get, get out of there as quickly as possible but um yeah i mean i i expected a a difficult fight. I got a lot of respect for Lewis Smolka and I know that uh 
you know, on, on another night, it, it may have been a more grueling fight, but it was my night, and I went out there and, you know, visualized and took control of the situation and was able to, to get him in a bad spot and finish him. But, uh, yeah, I, I understand how good Lewis is. I've watched all of his fights throughout his entire career. I've been following this sport since before I was doing it. And uh, so I... I I feel fortunate, went out there and put it together. But I think it's just an example of what I'm capable of. You know, when, when things fire off, uh, I can finish anybody in the first round. You're coming across so nice right now. But when you, like, face off against these guys, when you fight, I mean, you, you're angry. You're talking shit. You're getting in people's faces. And, and now you're like this, like, diplomat. What's what's going on? I, I think I've always had a measured approach to this thing. I If, if I get in somebody's face, it's a... Uh, it's a tactic, you know, and uh, I like to have fun out there and I, I'll, I'll say something and uh, I, I enjoy fighting. Yeah. I don't know. It's, uh, I, I had a buddy, I, I got a buddy at the gym and he, he came, pulled up on a motorcycle. And I said something to the effect of like, dude, you would never catch me on the back of a motorcycle. He was like, well, that's ridiculous. You, you fight professionally. And I thought about it for a second. And I was like, well, yeah, but I, I, gen, I genuinely think I like fighting because I like beating people up. I don't like fighting because it's it's thrilling. I'm not a thrill seeker. You'll never catch me jumping out of an airplane. You'll never catch me on a motorcycle. I enjoy beating people up. So, yeah, I, I love this. Dude, you're uh, – well, I'm telling you, man. I mean, Poirier, who's a good friend of yours, is on top of the world. Are, have you been helping him at all? Get ready for some Ah uh, no! What could I do for Dustin Poirier? Uh, we we get together and pal around and train. I mean, I'm I'm a much better buddy than I am a training partner to him. But uh, no, I'm I'm really proud of Dustin and happy for him. And any type of insight or uh, anything I can offer to him, I try to. But he's Dustin Poirier. This guy's got it figured out. Did I? I see that you also coach. Uh, you coach Muay Thai. I I just started taking Muay Thai about a year ago. And I have such a new respect for it. Like, I, I never even noticed, like, the switch kick. You know, I just figured, oh, the guy just kicking me with his left. I don't know if he's mm-hmm. actually switching before he did it. Or even, like, the, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're up against a guy, just uh, like a lead elbow, just like a, yeah. just a, a, a push forward elbow. Mm-hmm. Like, all these little things that like, I never even knew I was watching. Taking it's place out there. Incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. Uh well- Every part of the game is it can be incredibly uh, nuanced and and uh, you there? Yeah, yeah, here. I'm sorry, I got I'm, I mean, <laughs> a call coming in. Um, uh, every part of the game can be so nuanced and and there's so much room for creativity. Uh, when when you isolate it just to boxing, and that that's why boxers look at the game and they're like these guys can't box. Well, there's a lot going on. So maybe we can't concentrate on the minutia of boxing, but uh, then you add things like knees and elbows and it's, it's boxing knees, elbows, kicks. So there's, there's a lot of creativity that can be uh, found in, in that, uh, you know, in, in that realm. So it it is interesting to see. Uh, I think a lot of guys in individual sports, they look at what's going on in mixed martial arts and they're like, this is, this is trash but you have to take into consideration everything involved. And uh, it's hard to get really, really good at one aspect when you're practicing them all. But yeah, I mean, uh, Muay Thai is great. And it's, uh, you know, there's definitely a lot going on. And my, me, myself, I'm not uh, from a Muay Thai background per se. I mean, I've done time in Thailand, but watch me fight. I'm, I'm kickboxing out there. There's, there's a lot of different, uh, a lot of different things that are that are at work, but uh, yeah, I, I, I do teach Muay Thai. We we have real guys that that uh, are traditional Muay Thai guys that actually teach there. Uh, I'm teaching danger things for the most part. <laughs> what are what are danger things? Uh, close your eyes, hold your breath, <laughs> bomb right hands until they die. <laughs> Dude, I honestly I I spent a lot of time with like Theo Vaughn, me and Theo for at least tour together. And you guys nice. have such a similar accent. I feel like I'm talking to like like a, a like a, a Theo Vaughn who makes more sense and like fights right now. <laughs> hey, I'll take that. I like Theo. <laughs> you guys have a very similar. Um, yeah. No. So what was it like being in, uh, in Thailand? Thailand was cool. Yeah, I was young. I was 23. I went out there with a really conservative kid. That I mean, we didn't go and do. Most people go to Thailand and they do Thailand and they're 
partying and banging hookers and being goofballs. But we went out there and uh, it was six weeks of training and bouncing between Phuket top team and uh, Sinbi Muay Thai and did some time in Bangkok as well and, and trained with some serious guys. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a great experience, eye opening, you know, and uh, I enjoyed it. And I, I think about it, uh, th- think about going back sometimes. Yeah, may- maybe will eventually. You also fought in uh, in Singapore, right? Yep. You fought an undefeated kid. Uh, you won. You won a split decision. Uh, how far? How clo- How much did you think you might get robbed? How worried were you when, when the fight was? Oh, uh, I was. I knew it was a close fight, and uh, it, it was hard. Uh, and to be honest, if it would have been the other way, it, it was justifiable. But uh, yeah, it was it was my night, and uh, I, I did think I won every round. Looking back and then watching it, I thought I won every round. But I I, I might be biased in that opinion. I don't know. Uh, but the kid was really good. I think one of the better one of the better guys I've I've ever stood in there with. And uh, I I don't know. If, we thought he was predominantly a grappler, so our game plan was to strike with him. He comes out and he's zapping me with really sharp jabs, and uh, so so I ended up probably fighting him. Uh, in his, you know, where where he was pretty strong, and uh, maybe could have took him down and beat him up and and grappled with him a little more, and it might have been a more decisive uh, victory. But that kid's good. I, I know he's moved stateside and he picked up an L to to another guy that's uh, really good in, in the states. And but I, I'm sure he'll be fine, and he's going to keep on getting better and really talented. Uh, w- one of the one of the few times I've been in the the cage and felt like I wasn't the faster guy in there you know so had to make some adjustments and uh, it was a tough fight it was a tough fight I don't know if you I don't know if you've seen it but go back yeah and I watch. did it was, it was a good shot. look I watched everyone the fight man oh I nice after the fight you had in the UFC and I, I used to watch you on uh, MTV back in the day thank you so uh, absolutely absolutely man um at Singapore when I was over there I, I did comedy for the military it's really clean yeah really clean. I mean, and there are no homeless people. I don't know what they do with them. They probably but. just uh, take them out in the middle of the ocean and just <laughs> set them loose and let them sink. Well, that's definitely something that Theo Vaughn would say. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I hope they're not doing that, but I understand. Um, now, you got a fight coming up in Newark, New Jersey. Who are you fighting? Tell me about it. You're not ranked 10th. Is there more pressure? Is there less pressure? Am I ranked number 10? Yep. Is there only ten flyweights ranked right now? Because <laughs> uh, last last I checked, I was one out of twelve, and by my estimation, that's last place, and I'm not super happy with that. But uh, yeah, I'm fighting Jordan Espinosa. I, I think he's ranked number eight. Maybe he's ranked higher at this point. Uh, really, really good. I'm sorry. Okay. So, and what do you know about this guy? Uh, he's good. Athletic kid came from the uh, Dana White contender series uh is strung together quite a quite a few wins i think he's undefeated at flyweight um athletic uh got got some good stuff a darser you know got a, got some great darse finishes and uh a relatively good wrestler i believe he was a state champion in arizona which is difficult to do yep so uh yeah he's a tough kid i, I again uh, another guy that he's athletic I, I've not often stood in there with a guy more or as athletic as myself, and I think this kid probably has a little more pop than me. Uh, with that being said, I think I'm a little smoother and a little more polished, so I'll be able to make up the distance. But, uh, yeah, we're we're, uh, we're preparing for a tough fight. I mean, this kid's good, got a lot of finishes, uh, can crack for for a flyweight, He's head kicked some guys and hurt them. He's hurt a bunch of guys with left hooks. So uh, we, we've got things that we're trying to – hone in on and, and pay attention to but much the same i'm gonna go out there you know with my head screwed on straight and try and see everything and put a right hand on this guy's chin watch him fall i can't wait for it i can't wait for it the whole, uh, the, who's the uh the main card of the event who's the uh, headliner it's gonna be robbie lawler versus oh. colby covington oh wow and I, I couldn't wow. be more excited that's gonna be a good fight yeah it's gonna be a great one two guys i admire uh, when I moved out to American Top Team, Robbie Lawler was very friendly, actually introduced himself to me day one, took me to lunch, uh, and, you know, I've got a lot of respect for the guy. He was always uh, a great person to have around and somebody I looked up to, and when he left American Top Team, it uh, hurt my feelings. And obviously, 
Colby Covington, uh, another another guy that uh, I admire and am friends with, and you know it, uh, it's hard I split torn on the matchup, but uh, I am honored and uh, I'm grateful to to be on a card with those guys. Now, Colby said that Robbie left American Top Team because he was sick of Colby beating him up. Yeah, <laughs> is there any truth to that? Did you see that? I, listen, I. Mm, Robbie kind of always did his own thing and, and ran his own practices. And, uh, you know, Col- Colby's just, you know, he, he's just being a gamesman. You know, that's that's a little gamesmanship and, and uh, good on him. But we know what training is. And uh, I've I've been to gyms and been roughed up by guys. Sometimes you put yourself in positions to be roughed up by guys because they're good at certain things. So, uh, you know, a fist fight is a fist fight. And just like in my fight, you know, I, I wouldn't want to challenge this kid to a foot race. But luckily, we're not doing that. We're fighting each other. So, uh, Got it's, it. yeah, it, it's it's one of those things. Like, uh, don't, don't be the guy that uh, lulls yourself into a false sense of security because of something that happened on the mat. And I right. think Colby is smarter than that. And he's, he's just running his mouth like he always does. And I love yeah. it. Me too. I love it too. Uh, now, American Top Team, somebody was telling me that uh, someone got kicked out. I'm not going to say who. And I go, why? And he said, oh, because he was smoking weed in, in the dorm room. And I was like, you can't do that? And the guy's like, no, you can't smoke weed in the dorm room. You can't bring girls back. You have to do the, all the dishes. If they're not done, you get you have to do like push-ups. It's like a boarding school. Like, is, it, is this true? <laughs> Well, I stayed in the dorms, and I mean, it's common courtesy, right? You're you're staying in a place for free, so you don't bring back chicks and bang them in the dorm room. I mean, that's come on now. Uh, you don't smoke weed in the dorm room. You can go right outside and smoke weed. That, that nobody's going to give you any issues if you peek around the corner. Not that I know, but uh, like you can smoke weed outside. You don't smoke in the dorm room. You dip shit. Uh, I don't know who that is, but what a fucking idiot. Uh, uh, washing your dishes. Who else is going to wash them? Who else is going to wash them? They're just going to sit there. So, I thought yeah. maybe they have like housekeepers or people that come and like take care of stuff or clean the room. No, it, yeah. you're, you're, you're on your own, huh? No, sure. They do have people come and clean the room, but you're still expected to, to yeah. keep it, you know, like what? You just think you get to come here and freaking mess up all the dishes and ruin the kitchen? <laughs> Like, come on. Where where are you from? That's insane. Right. But you can't bring girls back? That sucks. I mean, you guys well, are like fucking Greek guys with testosterone no. running around. You can't bring chicks back? Well, no, you can't bring chicks back. You're staying at a place for free, you know? Like, be a little more resourceful. Meet a meet a young lady who might have an, a freaking house. I don't know. See, I've, I've been with my wife, my now wife, for, you know, my whole duration in American Top Team. So it wasn't something that... I ever got in trouble for bringing chicks back to the dorm, uh, you know, but come on, man, be a little more resourceful. Yeah. You're staying here for free. You think you just get a free ride. You get to freaking bang chicks in your twin size bed. Come on now. <laughs> what if you bring girls back to your roommate? There should be a rule that if you bring girls back for everybody, you have you, to bring girls back for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. That, right. I'm game for that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> now you got married April 18th, you got married. There's a big day. Beautiful wife. Uh, was it? How, how, how has life changed since your marriage? Oh, it's uh, just a lot easier because my wife is really well put together and uh, well organized, and we have a beautiful home. And uh, no, everything's great, you know. And she's been with me throughout this entire process, so she knows what's uh, you know, she she knows what's uh, well, I. I this is going to sound wrong. She knows what's expected of her, you know, and uh, I I know what's expected of me as well. I'm going to put that as like the title of the podcast. My my wife knows what's expected. (laughs) (laughs) That'll get me in trouble quick. No, uh, but so it's been great. And I think, I think a, an issue with young guys coming up, something that they commonly run into is uh, getting distracted. And what is more distracting than beautiful women? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That. That. Like when you were on MTV, they must have been throwing themselves at you. Yes, absolutely. It was ridiculous. Yeah, actually, that's when I met my wife. She was one of the many, and she's okay with that. <laughs> she, she, she won though, right? She, she made it out at the end. So, but yeah, she was, uh, she was one of many, 
Uh, it was Survivor Snell, huh? That's right. That's right. And uh, she she got the prize, and it's a dirt bag like myself. I don't know. By the end of it, she's probably not as satisfied as she was when I was on MTV and I was hot shit. But Did here I we remember are. Sitting with you and uh, I was sitting with you and Poirier watching a fight, and uh, somehow we were we were uh, the fight. And I know, yeah, Dustin, man, you know I could. This is awesome. You know, I used to wrestle in high school. You know, I, I give you guys a lot so much credit. And he goes, oh, so you know how to take a beating? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, I'm not going to talk anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dustin's like, hilarious. He will, uh, <laughs> hanging out with that guy when he, he's funny. How he interacts with fans is funny, too, because most guys are, like, real gracious and thankful. But Dustin, he'll, he'll like, talk shit to fans. If, if they say anything, like, remotely He'll he'll go back at it. It's funny. It's funny. Yeah, I've seen him. I, yeah, I like him a lot. He's I've a seen him dude. like I've seen him kind of like bully people a little bit, but like but like in a playful way. It's it's good. It's great. He's he's a clever guy too, Dustin. Yeah, you, you guys are cut from a, a different cloth. Now you grew up in New Orleans. I grew up in Shreveport, Louisiana. So that's North Louisiana. In fact, uh, South Louisianians wouldn't even claim us. You know, uh, Dustin Dustin tells people I'm from Texas. But, now, did you go to Mardi Gras a lot as a kid? Oh, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. And, and I've had plenty of South uh, Louisiana influence and obviously moved to uh, Gladiators Academy when I was 20 years old and trained with Tim Crater and Dustin for years and wow. years before I moved to American Top Team and started doing my thing there. So uh, I'm very much ingrained in the culture of uh, Louisiana, and I'm, I'm a proud Louisiana guy. Dude, when I was in Mardi Gras, I went – I was on. I was actually on MTV True Life. I'm a comedian. I went down to Mardi Gras. I remember, yeah. To, to party, and I've never seen a more corrupt police force in my life. They would just arrest people for showing their dicks. Uh, oh, wow, and then, shit. <laughs> and then they would throw you in like jail, and then you were able to bribe bribe them off. Like oh, yeah. A certain amount of money get you out of jail. I was like, this is is this even legal? Yeah. Well, um, I'm not surprised that the police force in New Orleans uh, is corrupt due to the fact that they're the lowest paid police force in the United States of America. Yeah. Um, so there, there are there, there's something to that. But the state of Louisiana is is a corrupt place, uh, especially within the political landscape. And uh, it's it's something that uh, it, it's one of the reasons why I think it, it struggles and. Uh, it, it's a hard place to come out of, is because of all the corruption. Um, but uh, ho- hopefully, uh, working working towards things getting better. I know with guys like Poirier making making a good mark, and you know the the, the community can be improved. Uh, may, maybe through martial arts, maybe through combat sports uh, can can help a lot. I, I tell you what, go to Lafayette, Louisiana. It's a beautiful place, and uh, I, I can't give too much credit to the martial arts scene, but there are about six schools within. 25 square miles and they're all very successful and and it's it's a great spot that's awesome no i mean look it was crazy any i mean mardi gras was fun Anytime, yeah I, I couldn't imagine growing up there just seeing tourists come in and show their boobs that must have been yeah. crazy for you too. uh yeah i mean yeah sure i i didn't spend when i when i was younger i wasn't in new orleans so i'm sure that would have been a completely different thing actually the guy i'm staying with right now he did grow up in new orleans uh but he came from a suburban family he's a white guy so he didn't live a rough life <laughs> now, is it, now for me people ask me adam is a hard being faithful to your wife on the road it really isn't because i don't put myself in situations anymore where like you know i'm at a club or a bar or yeah. whatever you know of course um but to me also just getting caught cheating would just do so much more damage yeah. than actual being inside of a vagina right. you know what i'm saying another girl's vagina i like that would feel good don't get me wrong but just all the shit that would come along with it is just not worth it. Not even right. close. Yeah. Do you feel the same way? I feel the same way, and I try I, again. Uh, also, yeah, I try to avoid putting myself in such myself in situations where where I could potentially uh, get in trouble, you know. Um, but I, I can't give myself too much credit either. It's not like I'm a pussy monster, and I would just go out and get laid at will. <laughs> Like, come on! What world are we living in? No, but uh, I do. I do try to. Uh, I am. I am faithful to my wife. I believe in the sanctity of marriage, and uh, you know, I, I am a traditional guy who believes in traditions. And um, yeah, I'm. I'm the head of the household. Though my wife makes way more money than me, and is way smarter than me, and uh, way more responsible than I am, I still try and hold myself to a standard 
as if uh, as if I'm responsible to her. So yeah, I, I do my best. What does your wife do? She's a nurse. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. She's worked her way up though. She's she's in a management role. Uh, she doesn't do anything bedside. Uh, and nothing, point. and obviously nothing. Uh, you know, I'm not putting down nurses at all. Yeah. But it's crazy that you're like you're a pro athlete, and like you're the one percent of the one percent of people who made it. And you're like, my wife makes a lot more money than I do. Like, like that wouldn't happen to anyone on like the Lakers. Definitely not. Or uh, the Yankees. Definitely not. Hey, we're working our way up though, and this next uh, this next fight will be uh, far more um, worth Luke far more than than the yeah far more lucrative. Thank you. Far more lucrative than the last. That's the exact word I was looking for. And I couldn't pull it out of the sky. Far more lucrative than the last, and and uh, you know each fight is worth more. And before we know it. Uh, she's not going to be the one making more money than, than me. Now, obviously she can do her job the rest of her life. And I've got a small window of opportunity here, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of her though. And, and very grateful to be in a position to be married to a woman who is uh, powerful and uh, intelligent. Have you thought about acting or hosting? Cause you're really funny. Uh, shoot. It, I, how do you get started in a thing like that? You know, I, uh, getting started in fighting is pretty easy. You just start fighting people, but I don't know exactly. <laughs> I don't know exactly how you break out in the in the hosting industry. But I have been doing commentary, fight commentary. I'll actually be commentating for a, a fight on Flow Combat in Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, AKA, and I've got guys fighting on that card as well. So it's it's pretty exciting. That's coming up July twelfth. So I'm popping. Over do you have an Shreveport. Instagram, do you have, like a YouTube channel, or do you make videos at all? No, no, I'm not creative enough for something like that. I don't know. You're pretty funny, man. Thanks, yeah. man. I, I I would watch that. I'd watch you making a. We got we, we got to talk because I'm I'm on this platform that like pays really well for pe- fighters to like make videos. Yeah, so gotta, dude, I'd yeah. love to. I'd love to. I gotta, I, I'm I gotta talk to you about that. Open open to anything and uh, open to try anything too, at least once. Uh, except for uh, anal sex. Well, anything once. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> My wife the other night she was sleeping and I was sitting here. I'm like, anal sex. She goes, okay, turn over. I was like, not yeah, exactly how I meant it. That's not what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, listen, Matt. Uh, can't wait for your fight. It's gonna be on ESPN, right? ESPN Plus. Uh, ESPN or ESPN Plus, and if they're smart, they'll put me on ESPN because I believe I must watch TV now. Uh, there's this thing in this world called, uh, I don't know exactly what it's called. We'll have to come up with a name for it, but pretty much people hate little people. And I, I just want us to start talking about this because, uh, there's a, there's this unbeknownst bias against little folk. And we'll see if, we'll see if the UFC makes the right decision and puts your boy on the ESPN portion of the card. I, I, for selfish reasons, obviously, I want to fight on ESPN, but I think if we're really trying to bring this weight class back, put exciting guys in exciting slots, and I think I deserve to be on the ESPN portion. But regardless, I'm going to go out there and whip this cat. I can't wait. I can't wait. Thanks for doing the podcast, and have a great uh, upcoming week. Yeah, thank you, Adam. I appreciate you reaching out, and anytime, let's do it again. I love it. Thank you, brother. Take care. All right. Well, thank you, Matt Snell. You're the man. Uh, That was the podcast today. If you want to see me, uh, go to adamhunter.com. I will be in Las Vegas this week until Monday. Then in July, I'm at the – where am I? In July, I'm at the Off the Hook Comedy Club in Naples, um, July 17th to the 21st. Then in August, I'm in Mississippi uh, with Russell Peters, Biloxi, Mississippi, and then in Maryland, as well as Little Rock at the Looney Bin. So follow me, adamhunter.com. Thank you, Rockfin, for putting this together. And tell everyone how great Rockfin is. If you enjoy it, R-O-K-F-I-N. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.